Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we'll be talking about FE and how it manifests in the fourth slot. And so May, I'd love to hear your experiences as an INTP, how you experience your extroverted feeling. Um, so I have this analogy to explain that. Um, imagine there's a, a colored image in front of you, like maybe a photograph or a painting. And, um, and you're supposed to know the colors on uh, that image. And I imagine there's like a, a floating stick or a ruler just like following you everywhere. <laughs> and then on top of you, on top of that, you're colorblind. So, and you need to make, you, you need to like uh, make guesses of what the color is of each thing. So um, yeah, it's like, and every time you, you guess something wrong, you get smacked by that stick or ruler, it's just like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, for example, imagine like there's like a picture an image of a garden. And uh, I just remember like every time you see sunflower, it's always yellow, right? But if you see roses, it's a little tricky, you know? So it's like certain social situations, I know to say, you know, the correct answer, but like in other social situ situations, it's like kind of, it's like, I, I can't really tell if, if it's like a, a red or an orange or a, a green, like it's, it's like a blur to me, yeah. That's really well put, May. So being FE repressed doesn't automatically mean that you don't have social skills. In fact, you can meet some FE last people who have figured out the algorithm of socializing. Yeah. And so they can actually, some of them can be pretty good at it or decent at it, like pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Right. But, but there's this level of wanting to say the truth that comes with TI first. So you really just want to be able to speak your mind in a safe environment. You want to say your truth. Right. And so sometimes you might wonder, okay, is this a situation where I have to hold that back? Or do they secretly want to know the truth? It, right. So I was wondering, May, if you wanted to go into that. Yeah. So um, I, I, I struggle with that, you know, um, growing up because um, when people ask me a question, my first instinct is to tell them the truth. Or... Um, even, even if I'm not being asked, um, the truth is always gnawing at me. <laughs> so, for example, in certain situations, um, you know, when I'm being asked a question, I know a lot of times, like, that there's this algorithm, right? I have a theory on, like, what I should say and what I shouldn't say, like, based on, like, a historical uh, experience, right? Um, and... There, although I would know what to say in certain situations, there's always this like hope <laughs> or this like, um, there, yeah, there's always this hope that I could speak the truth. And uh, sometimes I would risk it because to me, it's like, it's more uh, interesting if I could speak the truth or it, um, the, the interaction would just be more um, deep. I think if I could just speak the truth and then maybe we could have a discussion or something like that. And I think it's also at the same time, the reason why it was difficult for me to not speak the truth is because uh, I would be okay if someone sp spoke the truth to me. Like, um, so I, I just wouldn't, I, I, I did not understand why it's not okay to do it. I mean, it just took time. And that's kind of the reason why I got into Myers Briggs. It's it's to um, it's like the ultimate um, uh, algorithm <laughs> into understanding um, understanding other people, you know, um, and social uh, appropriateness. <laughs> yeah, that's really well put. <laughs> There is that urge because if you can say the truth, it will lead to a more interesting conversation. And also, well, what is the point to socializing if I don't get to speak the truth? And it's just really ultimately unfulfilling. So it's like, hmm, you would want to be able to say what you really think. Or else it feels like you can't be yourself around that person too. Right. 
And so with INTPs in particular, you'll see this behavior with their introverted thinking where they really like to delineate concepts. They really like to be able to clean slice concepts and to be able to cleanly categorize things. And so an example of this is if you tell an INTP they're a friendly robot, they might say, that's not exactly it. There's a difference between warm and friendly. And I think INTPs are more of a warm robot rather than a friendly robot. And so INTPs constantly throughout their entire life, they're, they're noticing, oh, it's not quite that. It's actually this. So they're trying to find the cleaner differentiation between something. Because in that previous example, the word friendly has connotations of a person who is outwardly nice, but is not inwardly warm. So you might draw that distinction. So waiters are likely to be friendly. But the reason why warm might be a better word to describe INTP is because it's a warmth emanating from inside. So it's more of an intrinsic sense of warmness. And so an INTP might have little delineations or, or little ways to parse out a concept like that, where you'll say something and they'll have the urge to correct you and go like, mm, it's actually <laughs> this and not that. And they don't know if they should say it or not. And so they're in this conundrum. Should I do the F-E thing of not saying it? Or should I just say it? <laughs> right. And every time we do the social appropriate thing to um, in, for that situation, there's always this itch just like gnawing at us, you know. And then um, you know, five minutes later, we might like bring back and say, you know, you were saying that earlier, actually, you know. So it's like the constant... I mean, everything that you've mentioned earlier, that's that's all like our um, effort into bringing things closest to the truth. Yeah. So like um, being pedantic, um, using precise words, that's all like our effort into making the most like uh, accurate, the, like bringing everything closer to the truth. And some TI users might struggle with the word truth. And so they're like, what I'm really searching for is correctness or clarity. And I think at that point, you kind of proved our point because you are delineating and trying to clarify concepts. So you're like, hmm, it's actually this as opposed to this. So you did the TI thing that we mentioned. Right, so, right. Yeah, but I do notice like TI users can get so pedantic even about the word truth because they're like, we're not exactly searching for truth. And I'm like, this is another example of TI pedanticness. <laughs> but it is kind of the search for truth. The word truth can have different meanings in different contexts. When you're trying to search for correctness or clarity, that is in a form looking for the truth. It may not be the truth of the universe because maybe you don't believe you can find that, but it is discerning truth in some way. So that right. is my defense of INTPs searching for the truth. I have actually pondered on this before, like what, what is truth to me? What am I looking for? Uh, and I think when it comes, like when I'm being pedantic, it's always the logical consistency. Um, so I'm okay with anything as long as it's like, it makes logical sense. There's logical consistency. And then I can be open to whatever, you know, that truth is. Exactly. And so I would say logical consistency is a form of searching for the truth. Like you said, May, it's logical truth. And so thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care.